We're live in Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York over the next hour, plus we're covering stories from Los Angeles, London, and Paris. Here are the top stories on the Bloomberg and from around the world that we're following. In business, it's a busy day in deals, from Burger King's parents snapping up Popeyes to Kraft and Unilever walking away from a tie-up. We'll break down the latest in the M&A space. And in commodities, mining giant BHP Billiton reported a bit a big earnings beat as commodity prices surged. We'll hear from the firm's CEO about the results and why they're warning iron ore's rally could come to an end this year. And in politics, the focus on the French elections are ramping up. Investors are digging into data and bond yields to see which way the voters could be tipping. U.S. markets close in two hours. Let's check, check in on where stocks are trading with Abigail Doolittle. Abigail? Well, Amanda, it's really shaping up to be a risk on day here. We have the major averages in the U.S., the Dow, S&P 5. Areas before you talked about the comps for movies last year. Obviously, it's hard. This is Bloomberg Markets. I'm Oliver Rennick. And I'm Amanda Lang. We want to turn now to Europe as anti-Euro presidential candidate Marine Le Pen. I'm Amanda Lang. What would you miss? Well, as this, the VIX rests at record lows, some traders are profiting from calm waters. We've talked a lot about the reduction in volatility in the VIX in the market, some other exogenous shock to the markets. But in the last little while, if you wanted to capitalize off calm, this is where you do it, Joe. It's a, you can make a lot of money just shorting the VIX. It was less than 20 at the beginning of seven, uh, 2016, now nearly 70. So that's a pretty nice return. It's a very nice little return. All right, let's take a look at it, which is perceived to be the safest asset. So normally you'd think good data, higher rates, but not happening because everyone wants to hold those safe haven assets with all the political risk out there. So quite a divergence opening up. Huge divergence could get worse before it gets better. Could, could do. All right, the market closes next. We want to leave you with the major averages. Less than I'm Amanda Lang in for Scarlet Food. And I'm Joe Weisenthal. If you're tuning in live on Twitter, we want to welcome you to our closing bell coverage every week. Thanks so much for watching Tesla set to report after the bell tomorrow here with a, a little preview of what we're looking for. This is the first earnings report since Tesla closed its $2 billion deal for Solar City back in November. Elon Musk and Tesla have declined to comment on how it plans to include the solar panel company in its release tomorrow. This leaves Wall Street at a loss for how to predict the company's results. Well, here's what we do know about Tesla. This is today's The Numbers Don't Lie. Despite the lack of earnings clarity regarding Solar City, shareholders have driven Tesla's stock near its 2014 record high, the stock rising more than 50% since December 1st. Those gains in the stock have driven its market cap closer to GM and Ford. Tesla, this white line, now holding a nearly $45 billion market value that is not far behind the major auto markers. That's a two, $627 million valuation for every car sold by Tesla in the last four quarters. Analysts, not as positive. The median target of 14 analysts surveyed by Bloomberg was as much as $48 below Tesla's stock price last week. As you can see, that's the most pessimistic view from Wall Street since Tesla became a publicly traded company. Now, part of that pessimism stems from the new Model 3. Very few analysts seem to believe that Elon Musk will hit his forecast of producing between 100,000 and 200,000 Model 3s in the second half of this year. Tesla needs the Model 3 to excel to reach its 2020 goal of 1 million total deliveries. Now, total sales have to increase at a compound annual rate of 90% to hit that ultimate target. The company loses money every year as it builds the infrastructure that it needs for that kind of growth, especially when your factory, is, it, when you factor in Gigafactory, it will soon be the world's biggest battery factory. Tesla says that it's expecting significant financial benefits from the company combination with Solar City, one analyst expects the merger to make earnings, quote, noisy until Tesla's new products like the Model 3 have the opportunity to prove themselves. Uncertainty remains. We're going to be tracking the results when they're released after Wednesday's U.S. closing bell. Joe? Of course, um, how might this race, as it unfolds, and it, it's going to unfold over the next couple of months, shape uh, electoral outcomes in Italy or Germany? What you miss in today's Walk the Talk, Scarlet Food talks to three female entrepreneurs about the lessons and strategies that they've learned while building their own companies. At an event hosted by Cornell Tech at Bloomberg, she asked the group whether a startup can be small and still considered a success. What you miss? Markets closed in the U.S. at record highs ahead of some rather important January meeting. That's all we've got for What you miss? Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. This is Bloomberg.